Alright guys, time for the camera reveal video. Um, I'll put some pictures up of the camera and and uh, when I get home I'll record the second part of the video and go through some of the menu with you guys and stuff like that. Um, but the camera I got uh, is a Garmin Verb Elite. And uh, as far as recording abilities, It'll record in up to 1080p at 30 frames a second. Uh, so same as the GoPro uh, Hero 2 in that respect. Uh, but it has a lot more extra features that the GoPro doesn't offer. Um, there's a couple of them being, uh, one, it'll do your max speed uh, that you've had while the camera's on. Uh, it'll do G-forces. It'll do um, altitude, and uh, it also does, you can put it to where you can overlay a speedometer on the video itself. Uh, you can also overlay uh, throttle and brake. Um, the, the camera is, is amazing. I like it better than the GoPro. Uh, the mounting system is pretty darn good. The, the hardware quality seems better than GoPro. I've had several GoPro mounts break on me, so uh, that's why I say that. Um, and again, I'll show you the camera mount and stuff like that in here when I get home. I am still in Topeka, headed home now. Um, there's a couple things that sold me on this camera. Uh, one being that the company is a local company, other, although they are worldwide. Uh, they're local to me here in uh, Kansas City. Uh, it's made by Garmin. Uh, the camera has a 1.4 inch chroma display on it. Uh, one downfall about that is it is not backlit. So if you're wanting to look at your stuff in a dark parking lot after you've gone 170 mile an hour on the highway, gonna need a flashlight or something like that to help you look at it. Um, the other thing I don't really know about the, the display is I wish when you play your stuff back it does not play the sound with it. Um, unless you have headphones plugged in I think. So that's one thing I would want to add to the camera if Garmin's listening. <laughs> I doubt it but if they're listening I'd want to add that. Um, it does have Wi-Fi and all that good stuff, so I do have an app on my phone. And it's really responsive, unlike the GoPros. Only one, two things you can't do on the app that I don't like. As soon as you start recording, you cannot see what you're recording on the phone. Like, it won't display, it just goes to a picture of the verb. Uh, the second thing is that once you have recorded something and it's stored on the verb, you can't play it back on your phone. So there are a couple things that I'd like to have them add to the camera or add to the app. But other than that, it's been an awesome camera. Uh, it does do better at night than the GoPro does, I believe. For instance, on my speedometer, the GoPro will wash the mile per hour and everything like that out. You can't see it. Which could be helpful in some situations, if you get my drift. <laughs> no pun intended there. Uh, but, I like to see it. I like to be able to see the speedometer. Uh, and that's one thing the GoPro did do really bad, is wash out the speedometer and stuff like that on the camera. So, um, All in all, I mean, the camera retails for $3.99. So I got it for considerably cheaper. Uh, so it was a great deal for me. I think you can find the Elites even on sale for like 350 360 uh, Which, you know, the, that's considerable to the GoPro Hero 3 Plus. And let's face it guys, really when you're recording on a motovlog, unless you're accidental broadcast, um, and this is not a diss on him at all, unless you're accidental broadcast, there's no reason you need to record in 2.7K or 4K. Um, because where most of us ride, there's not that great of scenery. Well, at least for me and the other moto vloggers in the continental United States. Unless you're in Hawaii, uh, or South Africa, or something like that, and you have absolutely fucking beautiful views, I don't see a reason why that 
why you should have that much resolution. Now, like I said, accidental broadcast, yeah, that's worth it for him. Definitely worth it for him, but not for me. So, yeah, guys, there's a little update on the Garmin Verb, and uh, we'll do more of an update when I get home and record the rest of this video. I'm going to record the rest of it on the GoPro. Let me know if you guys are interested in seeing a comparison, because I still have my GoPro mount on the side of my helmet. <coughs> so I can do a comparison with both cameras rolling at the same time. Uh, have the GoPro mounted below, upside down like Baker X Derek does. Have the Verb mounted on top. There's a couple more things I want to say about the Verb before we get into the next part of the video, and I'll point these out there too. Uh, the Verb is bigger, it weighs more than the GoPro, probably about two times more. But at the same time, it has a lot less wind resistance than the GoPro. The GoPro is a square block hanging off the side of your head. The Verb is shaped more like the Drift HD, which you'll see here in a minute. Also, on the GoPro, if you scratch your lens, you're fucked. On the Verb, it's completely waterproof right out of the box. No case needed, no nothing. Also, it has a protective cover over the lens, so if you look right there, you can see the protective cover over the lens. That is replaceable. So that's another big selling point for me since I have a GoPro with a scratch lens and all they said was, we'll offer you 20% off a new $400 GoPro. Fuck you! I'm going to buy a Garmin first. So there you guys go. And we'll come to the next part of the video right about now. Hey, what's up guys? Time for the second part of the video. Hey, what's up guys? Time for the second part of the video. Um, this is my editing station. All my shit runs off that HP laptop. Uh, I have ordered a new computer, so it'll be here next week. I'll show you guys that when it gets here. should be a lot better for editing and whatnot. Um, but without further ado, we'll go ahead and show you guys the camera. Uh, this is the Garmin Verb Elite. Um, like I said, it's a little bit uh, bigger than the GoPro. It's probably about the size of a Drift. A little bit smaller, I think. Um, it does weigh about twice as much as the GoPro does. Um, but as far as having it mounted on the side of your helmet, and I say side because I don't think you're going to get this mounted on the front chin mount, uh, I'll show you uh, that here in a second as far as how it compares to a GoPro and why I think it's better and it's even less noticeable even though it's twice as heavy. Um, the first thing I want to point out to you guys is this front lens protector. This, Like I said, this camera is waterproof. So the front lens protector here, it's held in by four Allen bolts. That's replaceable. So if you have a GoPro like mine that has a scratch lens on it, I don't know if you guys can really see it. It's kind of right there in the middle. Um, this camera's basically trash. Uh, whereas this one with the Verb, you can get a replacement lens for it. Now as far as the wind resistance and why I think it feels better on the side of your helmet, when you have a GoPro mounted, you have it mounted like that, we like that, however you do it, Baker X Derek. Uh, so, when you're looking at a verb from the front, and you have that part, I'm going to set this camera down and see if I can do this, show you guys what I'm talking about here. So, basically, from there, and you set the GoPro on top of it, you're looking at half the wind resistance uh, that you have from a GoPro. So, um, a lot of times with the GoPro I'd notice the next morning or even that night when I got home from recording whatever uh, my neck would be tired and hurt um, that doesn't happen with the Garmin Verb so uh, that in itself uh, is worth it to me with the Verb plus we'll get into the other things um, here in a second with the menu first I'm going to show you guys how it mounts on the side of the helmet um, this is the mount for the Verb um, it mounts kind of like a GoPro. Like I said, uh, I think the quality of the hardware with the Verb is better than the GoPro. Um, this stuff doesn't feel like it's going to snap anytime soon, where I've had several pieces to my GoPro snap, especially the little clip mounts. I think I have one up here, maybe. I don't know. Uh, somewhere. Either way, uh, I've had these mounts break on me, like right here and right here, uh, a couple times. 
Now, you can always call GoPro and they'll give you new ones. Um, but at the same time, it's kind of a pain in the ass. Uh, also, you know, on these... Whoa, I'm throwing shit all over the place. That's my mini quadcopter charger. Uh, on these pieces, uh, sometimes, especially if you're just storing these pieces and you screw your bolts in here, these tabs will break off. Um, they're pretty rigid, but they're pretty brittle. Um, so I've had problems with that in the past. Uh, like I said, I do still have my, hey, my, here's my Senna, my GoPro sticker, which will be off of there soon, my GoPro mount, and my Verb mount. Now, as you can see, the Verb mount's a little different. It has a bunch of ridges in there. And basically the way this works is you put this on here. There's this little twist dial. You can slap this on here. Get it threaded right, start threading it down, and I'm doing this one handed again, guys, because I don't have a girlfriend or anything to hold my fucking cameras for me. <laughs> uh, so, once you get it started threading, uh, and you can get it on there and you can hear it. So, just get it to where you think you need it, which is about, I think I go right there. Uh, that's one thing you do, I mean. With the GoPro, it's a little easier to to adjust the camera as, as far as that goes. But this, once you get it set, it's definitely not going anywhere. Um, so that's kind of how the mount looks on the helmet. We'll go ahead and push this. Basically, uh, it clips in in the back through that little connector. Or it slips in that slot right there. Uh, so you slip that in first. Lay it down on top in the front. Press these two little buttons on either side. There's one over here and one over here. Press those two buttons. Press the camera down. And it's in there. No case needed for it. No nothing. Now, like I said, it does have a mic adapter. And it is waterproof. I don't know if it's waterproof at when you plug a mic into it. Because you do have to lift this little rubber flap on the back. Lift that little rubber flap right there. And there's two uh, ports in there. I'll turn it so you guys can see them better. Two ports. Okay, obviously the mic adapter only fits in one. Uh, standard mic adapter, I think it's the same thing for the drift. Uh, this one's the Garmin actual mic adapter. Um, but yeah, you just push it in here. Now, when I first got this camera and I thought I was having mic problems, um, I just kind of set it in there like that because I didn't think, you know, I didn't want to hurt the camera or anything. Um, but you can tell, like, like I said, this is pretty high quality. Once you push it in there, at least the first couple times I did, you could hear that thing click. And I'm trying to pull it out right in there. I'm going to pull it out. But it is, uh, you do have to make sure you, there we go, there's the click. Did you hear that? So I'm pulling it out right now. It's kind of hard to pull out. <clears throat> so it's made, the ports are made very well on this. Um, so anyways, you know, that's that's how you hook the mic up and shit. Um, we'll go ahead and head, and to take the camera off the helmet, it's really easy. You just grab it on top, hold it, press and hold these two buttons. Boom. It's off of there. Okay. So, uh, we'll go ahead and get into some of the screen things. Uh, there's two ways you can start recording on this camera. The first way is to press the power button and turn it on. Or, we'll go ahead and do that. Uh, or, we'll go ahead and do this way first. Uh, if you see, it says uh, it says record right there. It's kind of hard because the lighting in my house sucks. If you flip this button forward, camera turns on. It says Garmin. Beeps at you. Takes a couple seconds. Bam. It's recording. And uh, it's, it's looking at everything I'm looking at, obviously. The screen does shut off after like a minute or so. Uh, this is kind of hard to capture on the GoPro, but uh, we'll go ahead and turn it off. So I d have noticed uh, it does take a second to turn off. Uh, if you turn it off and turn it back on real quick, it uh, it won't record your video. you got to wait for it to turn off, and then you can turn it back on. So we'll go ahead and turn it on with the menu button this time, or mode button. Power's up. Now I'm holding it at an angle like this. I, n I realize it's not centered in the middle of the screen, but this makes it a little easier for you guys to see on the on the camera um, so yeah I mean it's uh, basically once you get there you can go ahead and press the mode button and that'll take you to where it says playback uh, and that's showing the video that I just recorded 
uh, if you press the mode button again, that takes you to dashboard. Now this is where all the cool stuff is. This is uh, shows uh, how many feet you've traveled. Uh, the next one is how long the camera's been on, what time it is, um, and what time the sun sets. I think 8:30. Uh, this is G-forces, so um, hang on, I'll point the camera over here, and I'll go ahead and I did that. Now you can see the max G-forces it's had is 3.7. Uh, so that keeps in mind, you know, how how much G-forces you've had while you've been running the camera. You go to the next one. Core, I don't know exactly what that one is, sorry. Uh, this is going to be your max speed, average speed. Uh, max, average. Uh, altitude. Yeah. So, pretty cool. Um, actually, on this, if you look at it, where the little yellow dot is, is like where you're at in the day. I guess this is morning and this is night. I'm still trying to figure all this shit out, so uh, just bear with me, guys. Um, like I said, I'm not exact. Oh, this is your compass, I think. There's a compass on it, all kinds of cool shit. Since it is made by Garmin, um, it has a lot of cool shit that you can do on it that other action cameras don't offer. Um... You can get a remote for this. Uh, you can either use a Garmin watch, or uh, they make a separate separate remote, which is only like 40 bucks. So accessories for this camera are pretty cheap, guys. Uh, as far as the battery door and compartment, uh, it's down here on the bottom or on the back. Uh, you flip open this little D-ring, turn it counterclockwise, kind of clicks over. Like I said, this camera is really well made, so sometimes it's a little tough to get things open, and it is waterproof, so. Pull up and back. You got your battery. It does have like a three hour battery life. Take the battery out. Your micro SD card is in there. To get the micro SD out, you push this metal thing forward. I think. Yeah, forward. Flips up. And then you can take the SD card out of there. So, um, that's, uh, <laughs> that's the camera reveal, guys. Um, I'll do a little more in depth. Like I said, I I like this camera a lot. It I think it does better at night um, than the GoPro Hero 2 does at least. Um, you don't have to set it for night mode or anything like that. And I am sure there's a ton of features that I'm leaving out on this thing. But um, so far, you can just feel the way the camera is made. It feels really, really like durable it's got a nice weight to it um, it's also easier to film if you're a moto vlogger and you like to film stuff like this it makes it a lot less shaky than holding the GoPro like this and trying to film stuff uh, so that's another plus um, I don't know if you guys have any more questions about the camera let me know hit me up uh, send me a message leave a comment whatever you want to do there uh, thanks for watching guys, and you guys have a good one. Peace.